The Ruin DLC has finally arrived and completely surprised me. Steel Wool redeemed themselves from the controversial mess of Five Nights at Freddy's security breach, and after playing it, I feel that I have a better understanding of what Steel Wool is trying to do with the franchise and the story they are trying to tell. I do have my critiques and issues I want to mention, but I will save that for another video, because in today's video, we are tackling some of the lore questions this one left behind. So, let's get on to topic number one. One of the questions hanging over from security breach to Ruin was what ending is the canon ending? The main two contestants were the Burn Trap ending and the Princess Quest ending. Both of these contained massive lore implications with the Burn Trap ending seeming to confirm the revival of William Afton and the introduction of the Blob, while the Princess Quest ending gave us our main three characters sitting on a hill eating ice cream. So, which one was canon? While playing the DLC, I immediately got the feeling that the Princess Quest ending was the canon ending. Main contributors to this included finding Glaremark Freddy's headless body, no at all mention of Burn Trap except for the comic book pages which depicted every single ending except the Princess Quest ending, and us finding Vanny's mask. If you recall, at the end of the Princess Quest ending, we see Vanessa leaving behind the Vanny mask because Gregory is able to purge Glitchtrap from her mind. So I feel we have some pretty solid evidence to prove that this is the canon ending, but I have actually one more reason. Back when we were introduced to Burn Trap, the community responded was pretty mixed. Many were disappointed by Steel Wool's choice to not innovate and create a new villain, but instead pull one from the past. I think Steel Wool saw the community's response and decided to change course and plan Ruin off of the Princess Quest ending because of it. So now we know which ending we're playing off of, but who are we playing as? In Ruin, we play as Cassie, a young girl who ventures into the Pizzaplex to save who she believes to be Gregory. While playing the game, you will notice that Cassie has a history with Fazbear's. When she finds the Faz wrench, she just casually throws this in. A Faz wrench? It's just like my dad's. So we know that her father has a history with Fazbear's as well. This is confirmed by the AR collectibles we find in the game. On the AR Chica lunchbox, the note says, my dad used to collect these. On the AR Glam Bonnie plush, it says, dad wouldn't tell me why they replaced Bonnie. And finally, on the AR Bonnie lunchbox, it reads, Bonnie was my dad's favorite. So Cassie's father seems to have not only been a big fan of Freddy and the gang, but also work at the Pizzaplex. Cassie is tied to this place. So it shouldn't really be that surprising why her and Gregory are friends. They both seem to share this connection. As Cassie begins to make her way through the ruined Pizzaplex, she comes across Maskbot, who gives her the Vanny mask. This mask claims to put her in an AR mesh network that allows her to interact with security nodes, move through walls and barriers, and use the camera network to search for anomalies that prevent her from moving forward. As I mentioned earlier, the fact that the mask is here says a lot about why the Princess Quest ending is most likely the canon ending. So we know Vanessa left it behind, and now Cassie has it. In the mask, we meet Helpy, who seems to be our helpful guide just trying to help us save Gregory. However, when you look closely, you'll notice that Helpy has two versions. One that looks normal, and another that has yellowish eyes and a vein on the side of his head. You may disagree, but I think that this is the last remaining piece of Glitch Trap. First of all, I would not be surprised if Phasma Entertainment does actually have an AR system that is for technicians, but I can almost guarantee you that they would never willingly put it in the Vanny mask. I believe this may be the Glitch Trap program trying to copy it, or perhaps Vanny gave that program access to the network which led to Glitch Trap infecting all the animatronics in Security Breach. Sure, the Princess Quest ending did purge Glitch Trap from Vanessa's mind, but all it did was just remain in the mask waiting for someone to put it on. A strong counterpoint is the belief that the mimic is in the mask talking to us, but pay attention to this clip. What, what happened to it? Yeah, with my help, I have been helping with the signal jammer. That rabbit thing won't bother you anymore. Notice how Helpy has veins and also claims to be the one jamming the Mexa system, but the Mimic chimes in and says that it was him who did it by updating Helpy. This small moment shows that these two are not the same and maybe entirely separate entities. Why would the Mimic have to update Glitch Trap? It's because he's weak. He no longer has the power he had before. The program is now confined to a single mask and is powerless without anyone wearing it. That's why we can see Helpy in the real world. Glitch Trap is finally back in business and within the mind of a new victim. Let's talk about the other scary bunny in this game, the Entity, also known as the Mexus system. Well, in the AR world, you will notice that there is a tall, glitching rabbit constantly trying to get you out of the AR network. When it gets too close, it can call the other animatronics to come and get you. While he does seem to be a villain at first, we start to learn that he's actually trying to stop us because he knows who is really in the basement. It seems like this program is connected to the security node network and is the main reason why the mimic is unable to escape from both its physical and digital prison. When you come to the end of the game, you will notice what seems to be a giant server thing containing the entity. Now many are theorizing who or what this thing is, but the more important question should be, who made it? Looking in the corner of the room where the Mexa system is located, you will find a small backpack belonging to our old friend Gregory. Now we know the burn trap ending isn't canon, so why did Gregory 
Gregory come to this basement? While it didn't hit me at first, as I was scrolling through Twitter, people were tossing around the possibility that it was Gregory and Vanessa who came down to the basement to stop the mimic. And it makes sense, Vanessa was under the possession of Glitchtrap, and if it was trying to get her to build a physical form, then Vanessa would know it was there. She would also know the potential danger something like this has. So, Gregory and Vanessa may have repurposed the Fazbear Entertainment Network to create the security nodes, but also put a concrete wall just to be safe. Some people are also theorizing that Cassie's dad might have put this network together rather than Vanessa and Gregory. The evidence for this is that Cassie's dad seems to be a technician and would have the knowledge to put something like this together. Another supporting point is the fact that Cassie's dad seems to have a connection to Bonnie, and if he was to program a system and needed an avatar for it, he would likely choose Bonnie. Now this does seem to raise more questions. How did he find the mimic? When did he set up the system? Did he die while setting this up and that's why Cassie speaks of him in the past tense? How long ago was this set up? A lot of questions and fortunately, I have no answers because I don't really buy into it just yet. While there is an emphasis placed on Cassie's father, I don't want to theorize too much about someone that we haven't even met yet or know that much about. So for this reason, I think that the most logical explanation is that Gregory and Vanessa came back so the mimic wouldn't escape. They used the existing Fazbear network to try and build a digital prison for it. While it is true that if the Mexus system could just draw or at least talk, it, this DLC could have been over in like two seconds, where's the fun in that? I'm sure Gregory and Vanessa were not too focused on a linguistics program when they were making this thing. So let's transition to the animatronic, sorry, endoskeleton of the hour, the Mimic. Before we begin, major props to Steel Wool on the execution and design of the Mimic. Please comment down below, Steel Wool W. I want to give them the credit they deserve. While we all knew within the first 10 seconds that Gregory was not actually here, I feel that the reveal of the Mimic was still so satisfying. That cutscene of us meeting the Mimic gave me chills and is definitely up there in terms of the FNAF all-time moments. While some of the more casual fans may have been surprised to find the Mimic, we knew, us hardcore fans, that the Mimic was going to be here from the Tales from the Pizzaplex books. We also know that the Mimic is quite a vicious character as well. Within the epilogues, there are countless stories of this Endo doing some real damage to anyone that crosses its path. So when Cassie was face to face with the Endo, I was not expecting things to go well. But lucky for Cassie, Roxy was able to save her from the Mimic's final attack. After this, Cassie gets in contact with the real Gregory who leads her to an elevator with the help of a mysterious friend. Cassie is able to escape the Mimic's grasp, get in the elevator, and now what happens next has to be one of the most confusing things in FNAF history. While on the elevator, Gregory explains to Cassie that she was never meant to go to the Pizzaplex and that the thing down there tricked her. He explains that it has been down there for a long time and that the only thing keeping it there was the Mexa system. Then, while Gregory is talking, the Mimic feed cuts for a bit and Gregory continues talking. In the end, Gregory informs us that he doesn't want to be followed and that they have to cut the elevator so that they can escape, leaving us falling to our presumed death. Now, I know people are saying that the mic feed cut is actually the Mimic and anything said from then on is the Mimic. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm here to burst that bubble. First of all, it makes sense for Gregory to do this. I mean, the Mimic may not be the most intelligent thing out there, but it is a vicious killing machine. I assume Gregory would not only cut the cable for this elevator, but for the one that we went down as well. Also, why would the Mimic make excuses for Gregory to do this? The Mimic literally has a gaping hole opened by Cassie in the first place. I mean, it didn't catch Cassie, but why would it be focused on turning Cassie against the Gregory when it has everything it could possibly need? The door is freaking open. Mexus is literally down. It makes zero sense. And I don't even think Gregory wanted to cut Cassie's elevator. Personally, I don't think he's smart enough to cut it, but I would not be surprised if the friend mentioned by Gregory is actually Vanessa. If anyone would know the dangers of letting the Mimic loose, it would be Vanessa. She would have Mimic PTSD and probably wouldn't care if losing Cassie meant keeping the Mimic down in the basement. Gregory was trying to save Cassie, but in the end, he realized the scary truth. Letting Cassie up meant a possibility of bringing the Mimic with her. Now that's as far as we're going to go in this video. We've covered a lot of the DLC and even theorized a bit. However, you are definitely going to want to hit that subscribe button because in some upcoming videos, we're going to be talking about the Blob, Burn Trap's connection to the Mimic, the prototype on the bottom of Glamrock Freddy's foot, and so much more. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.